If you've been watching this channel for a while now, you'll know that Hans is one of the most regular guests we have on Tim Ford Tuesday. It seems he has some of the more wild ideas when it comes to conspiracy theories. However, recently Hans has made a video about space and the reasons why he thinks it's fake. I simply had to have a look. Hello all and thank you very much for joining me. Welcome to another episode of Tin for Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Yes, Hans is back this week as we take a look at his video entitled Reasons Outer Space is Fake. From the looks of it, he has got diagrams and everything. Let's get stuck in and see what Hans has got to say about this. Hans Wormhat, in this video I'm going to talk about how outer space fantasy land is fake, doesn't make sense. Even if you believe the things that they tell you about where we live, observable reality doesn't match what they say. And I'd be really curious to see some examples of this because I say that it does. It's a big lie to keep people away from God and just to keep people dumbed down. You live under the great deception that's talked about in the Bible. And they openly talk about this stuff, how they know the programming's complete when everything that people believe is a lie. It, tell a lie big enough and people will believe it. Keep telling people lies over and over and over again and eventually it sticks. The reason that people say these things is because they know it works. Actually, it's because it's true, but potato, potato because where we are today is already, we're already there. They love to talk about the present as if it's in the far future. You know, think of books like 1984. We already lived there. We already, the reason that that book exists is because it was somebody who was awake to some of these Masonic, Freemasonic shenanigans and they knew about all the mind control and thought crimes and so they wrote a book about it. In 1949. Come on, get to the space stuff please. In this video I'm going to talk about real life. Let's talk about real life. Reasons outer space is fake. Gases fill their container. This is a real life thing. Real life physics. Gases fill their containers. You cannot have gases next to a vacuum without a container. That's how real life works. Someone's been watching Nathan Oakley. Right, I don't know how many times that I or any other flat earth debunker needs to say this, but the atmosphere does not need a container when it's held to the earth through gravity. How do you have a vacuum next to gas, but there's no container for it? Well, that's what outer space fantasy land is. That's what our atmosphere would be, right? Earth spaceship with gas bubble hurling through vacuum of space is BS. It doesn't work like that. Real life doesn't work like you can have a vacuum right next to gas and the gas doesn't fill the container. That's, that's not reality. That's fantasy. So they've already, if they got you believing in an atmosphere and flying through, none of that makes any sense. To you, Hans. None of it makes sense to you. But it doesn't mean the rest of us don't understand it. That's not how reality works. Gravity. I mean, gravity is just great. This is just a huge topic that not enough people talk about. I really despise it, and most of them are gatekeepers. That's why especially I despise it. Most of them are gatekeepers. People that are saying, oh, well, you know, NASA didn't... I mean, the worst, like the worst level are people that say they went to the moon, but they faked the tapes that they gave us. That's like the worst type of gatekeeping out there, like the most basic... Oh, they faked the tapes, but they actually went there. Who actually says that, though? I've never heard anyone say that. Anybody who's not saying, the moon isn't even a place that you can land. The moon is a light in the sky. Those people are gatekeepers, too. Oh, they faked the moon landings, but they're not coming and telling you. None of this stuff is true. None of this stuff makes any sense. Incredulity surfaces again here. Gravity isn't even true. And it's the same thing with mocking flat Earth. They mock the gravity thing. Oh, what, you don't believe in gravity? You don't believe in... You're a flat earther? You think the earth is flat? You don't believe in gravity? No, I don't believe in gravity. It's not a thing. It's not real. The notion that mass attracts mass is not real. Except it is and can be proven. 
see the Cavendish experiment if you want to laugh. Here are just two classic examples that you can think of. You have an aircraft carrier. Okay, let's, let's imagine that you take an aircraft carrier, you lift it 50 feet off the ground, and you drop it. Or, you, I mean, you let go of it. You're no longer supporting it. It falls to the ground and it smashes. And what do people say? Oh, wow, gravity. Gravity really screwed up that aircraft carrier when it smashed into the ground. Well, I can imagine it would have screwed up that aircraft carrier. Okay, now take this aircraft carrier and place it in water. Why aren't people talking about gravity anymore? Where's gravity? How come, how come it floats perfectly fine and there's no issues? Where's gravity? Because the water supplies a buoyant force based on how much water is displaced and the gravitational force. That buoyant force ends up being stronger than gravity. Therefore, the carrier floats. And it's because gravity doesn't exist. People are just forgetting about... It's just density and buoyancy. The reason that... Uh, the aircraft carrier falls to the ground if you lift it 50 feet in the air and you don't support it It's because it's more dense than the air around it. So of course what, what else could possibly happen? It's more dense, so it's gonna go down, but it's also more dense than the air above it So why doesn't it fall up? There is an intrinsic direction because of gravity and that is down It's why the aircraft carrier would fall down even though all of the air around it is less dense than it it's not being pulled to the ground by the Earth. It's just that it's not buoyant. It is more dense than what's around it. But then the second you place that aircraft carrier in water, now it's buoyant, and now it's not flying downwards anymore. So once you've overcome the buoyant force, gravity is nowhere to be seen. There, there is no such thing as gravity. It's just buoyancy. Oh my, he was so close to getting it then, wasn't he? So close. And this is something that I always knew. When people try to talk about, oh, gravity, the apple falling from the tree, which of course is a uh, reference to the Garden of Eden. Is it? Satanic deception of gravity. That's why it's an apple. Right. The truth about that is that the whole apple story was actually made up. He fabricated this story once in an interview as a way to discredit input from another scientist, Robert Hooke, who gave him a nudge regarding gravity. And I just knew, I was like, what, the apple doesn't fall because of gravity, it falls because it's more dense than air and the tree isn't supporting it anymore. Okay, just a balloon is another great example of there is no such thing as gravity. The only forces that we're seeing in these scenarios is density and buoyancy which absolutely does not explain everything. The fact that two things fall at the same rate in a vacuum for one. When you have a balloon and it's not filled with helium, it goes to the ground. When you fill up that balloon with helium, the instant that the balloon is less buoyant than the air around it, it starts shooting up. Well, what happened to gravity? Gra if gravity is the thing that's pulling a balloon, the rubber balloon skin down, why do I only have to make the balloon less buoyant than air and all of a sudden it shoots up? Shouldn't I be having to overcome gravity? Shouldn't I have to put like a lot of helium into the balloon to overcome the heavy rubber? Yes, you overcome gravity because it's a weak force. He is so close to understanding it. No, because there's no such thing as gravity. You're not, you're not overcoming gravity. You're making the balloon less buoyant than air and then it will go up as if gravity doesn't even exist, because it doesn't. You don't have to overcome it. Nobody feels gravity pulling them down because it's not a real force. Forces are things that you can feel. You can feel a force that's applied on you. Stand on your head for one minute, Hans, and you will definitely feel something, namely the blood coalescing in your face. And how do we suppose it got there? Blood isn't more or less dense than more blood, so why do you think it does that? Hmm. Hans moves on to a thought experiment. Let's hear him out on that one, shall we? Here's just a great thought experiment that crushes any of their NASA Outer Space Fantasyland stuff. The loneliest particle lives at the edge of space. Let's pretend that their fantasy land is real. Then Earth clearly has some gas particles that are really far away. Correct. They're like at the edge. What's keeping them there? Gravity. I know that's not your cup of tea, but it is the right answer. Gravity, it, 
it depends on how massive you are. The, the force is going to be minuscule because it's a tiny, tiny particle. He does understand gravity. Would you look at that? So what's keeping it there? What's keeping this thing attached as Earth flies through three dimension and spins? Why is this little particle at the very edge still attached somehow? Gravity. And by the way, some of those particles are actually lost to space now and then. And uh, if, if gravity is so strong that it can hold on to this little particle way out there as Earth is spinning and flying, that's a really strong, that has to be an incredibly strong force to be holding something like that. It's not that it's an incredibly strong force, it's that the Earth is incredibly huge. Uh, it's because it's just BS, that doesn't make sense, this isn't reality. Why does that not make any sense? Because that's not how reality works. Because of the particle's distance and low mass, gravity should be minuscule, but Earth is allegedly flying through the vacuum of space at incredible speeds and rotating, don't forget rotating. And with this little particle thing, I can even get into more stuff, but I didn't draw pictures. Like, if what they tell us about the way that this, this place works, what if this particle bounced against another particle and then started traveling away from Earth's direction. There would be nothing to stop it. There, the atmosphere would be so thin at this point that once you had a bounce that sent you away from Earth's position, you would just be gone forever. So? So, and this is something that we can intuitively tell. If their little atmosphere, ball Earth story were true, you can just intuitively know that assuming their laws of physics which are just made up, like gravity, assuming all of their stuff even is true, their story still doesn't pan out. It doesn't make sense. You're, the atmosphere would be lost. Earth would just deplete its atmosphere. Yes, this isn't going to work if you don't think gravity is a thing, is it? And this is why they come up with things like, oh, well, we have an ozone layer. Oh, well, we have a, we have a magnetic field around us that keeps things nice and tight and in. They love to present us with imagery of Earth with like a shield around it. And it's to, it's to make us forget this stuff that doesn't make sense. Right, so we make stuff up that doesn't make sense in order to make you forget about the other stuff that doesn't make sense. Gotcha. Hans has really gone to town on this one and he ends up moving on to other topics. Something we're gonna look at in part two of this video. For now, we're going to leave Hans with his loneliest particle and end the video today. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then a like and subscribe would be thoroughly appreciated. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day, and I'll see you all tomorrow for the 250K special. See you then.